guys, I'm a film critic for NPR and other uh, outlets. Uh, uh, please welcome uh, to the stage the writer, director, editor of the film, uh, Koganam. All right, so I'll, I'll ask a few questions and then, you know, open things up for, for, for all of you if you have questions as well. Um, I just wanted to start with something, you know, you know, the basic, which is, um, you know, this seems like such a specific idea, um, um, almost like a short story, it's so particular, like, it, it also feels very personal, like, what, 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 what's, what are the origins of this film? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, it's personal, I mean, it's not autobiographical, but, but it is, uh, in, in the way that uh, it, it's, um, you know, it's about absence, and, and its relationship to Presence certainly in, in the realm of uh, our, our our family relationships. You know, my my parents are getting older, so uh, their departure is uh, heavily on my mind. And um, I have two young boys, and they're um, growing up, and their departure <laughs> is heavily on my mind. You know, I think there's that weird period when you're at this age where the two people, you're in the middle, and the, the two kinds of generations uh, are about to leave you and you feel that you know whatever that weight is you, you feel and um, so that so that I knew I was wanting to explore that um, and it's something that I know you know I'm, I'm uh, just a big uh, been deeply influenced by Ozu and of course that is his primary subject and it is uh, such a universal subject you know we all know what it's like to be children and the burden of all of that uh, in, in all directions. So, and, and so that's really personal. And, and then the question of forms. You know, when I when I uh, visited Columbus, uh, which was completely separate from the film, I had just read. I had been reading about it. I, I read about it in the New York Times. I think NPR had a piece on it. And I was like, what is this crazy town that is like, you know? Uh, so I visited that town, and I, I think you know, by lunch, I was like, I have to make a film there, and, and this story that I had in my head, it really sort of came together, but the question that also, of like, do forms matter? Does the art matter? And if so, how? You know, so, those, yeah. so, I mean, you, you as a first-time director, you're able to assemble such an incredible cast. Uh, how, how did that process come about? I mean, how did, how did, it, how did everyone come together? Yeah, um, no, I feel so fortunate. Um, and they're all really great, you know, human beings and great souls. And so, um, uh, you know, the, uh, when I, I wrote the script and uh, Chris White, who's one of the producers, he had uh, wanted to read it and he really responded to it. And it was like, I want to help you make it somehow. And uh, he immediately, he has a relationship with John Cho. And he's like, I want uh, John Cho to read it. Do you mind, you know? And, uh, you know, if you guys are part of the you know, conversation of Hollywood and diversity and the casting, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a big subject. But I didn't make the film thinking, oh, I have to have an Asian actor, but, it, you know, I wrote what I knew, and I, I knew that this person who was going to be in Columbus and sort of stuck there was going to be from uh, the other side of the world, so I thought, well, he should be Asian, you know, because I, I understand that. And anyway, all that to say, um, he said, can I let John read it? But I, I want to say this because diversity is an issue and is such a problem that I, as an Asian uh, filmmaker, had a hard time even imagining John Cho in that role. And the reason why is because I had never seen John Cho in a role like that. And I fell into that exact trap, right? Mm -hmm. And I had never seen, then it only took me a, a second to think, oh, I'd never seen in a role like that because he's never, been offered a role like that. And when he read it, so, you know, I was like, yeah, sure, let him read it. And he called and we immediately talked and it was like, John Cho, you know, studied at Berkeley, he studied theater, he's been wanting to play human forever. You know, <laughs> not just decided, you know, but he was, he was like, oh, I just to play someone quiet, you know, he talked about Truffaut, you know, this John Cho that we don't know, right? Because he's been a working actor playing, you know, like friends and these sort of like roles. And so it was really like, I, I felt chastised by my own, like this is, like we don't see that enough of that representation, the, the, you know, limited. But anyways, he was the first on board and he was just really like, you know, um, 
there, uh, like really wanted to be a part of it. It was really generous. And then, um, yeah, and then everyone else, uh, Haley Lou, I knew that this, um, uh, the uh, Casey role, Casey's role, I knew that I wanted someone who was not very, very well known because, um, uh, because she was going to be a, this working class girl, and, and you know, just having someone very well known. I, I, I just, you know, and I love discovery in films. You know, when you don't know someone really well and you discover them. Um, but you know, again, I come from the sort of film theory criticism side, and not the mechanism of filmmaking, which was a real eye-opening experience. And I understand, you know, like financiers, you know, that was a question. Uh, but um, I had some people who really fought for just like let's let's try to do it this way. Um, but uh, yeah, so I had seen Haley in a small, a uh, couple of really small things, and then met with her, and she just is has this incredible presence. And um, and so once we had those two on board, then yeah, we kind of filled it out. Did it help as a first time filmmaker to have? You know, I mean, John Cho, Parker Posey, these people, they've been around for such a long time, or such such pros, I mean, were there kind of a steady presence for you? Yeah, I mean, Parker was, was great, you know, and Parker, um, you know, but all of them, yeah, absolutely. I think that I was really fortunate to get to make this first film with people, and all of them were real pros, you know, Rory Culkin, you know, I, I think he's the best Culkin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I, you know, uh, loved him on You Can Count On Me. Uh, you know, just incredible, and he was incredible, and uh, Mishka Forbes, and so they were all real professionals. And so it did me, you know, I, mean, I really benefited from them being so seasoned, and yeah, they were definitely that sort of staying. Um, so talk about the town, it's such a unique place and it figures, how did you want um, that location to figure to figure into the story you were trying to tell and how did it also inform the way you photograph the film and compose the film? Yeah, you know, I think I saw some people from Columbus, like, is there, there, okay, and yeah, she's like a tour guide at Columbus and she really helped us out. <laughs> is there anyone else from Columbus here anyway? Oh. Right, I can't. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. He was our uh, on-set photographer. Um, I can't see. I, sorry. Um, but um, yeah. So, anyways. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, when I the reason why I thought I have to I have to shoot a film. You know, the question. And I was a graduate student, and part of my research was this question of modernity and, and modernism and. Uh, and the, the, the things we have to tackle as modern beings and the way in which both art and philosophy that we're all sort of tackling this question of what it means to be modern. And when I, uh, so that has always been a question that has interested me. And when I saw this town, I felt such a, um, you know, like it, the town itself had its own story. And I thought, if I didn't even have any characters and we just shot this town, it would be telling a story about the promise of modernism the, the, the limits of that promise, the possibility of that promise. It felt like a ghost town to me in a way, like it had its own story to be told. So it, it really, I do, the town was really significant. Like once I encountered that town, it felt like, oh, this town is telling a story that's really important to me, you know? So um, yeah, and then this, this question of for this uh, space and place, uh, and the environment uh, of a place and its relationship to characters uh, would be, you know, is, is a big part of how we make sense of this world. And, and modernism itself as a, a movement um, is, a, is a big part of how we try to make sense of it. So I knew that I wanted to shoot it um, uh, yeah, in, in a particular uh, way, uh, in a particular way of representing that space. I don't want to with all the details of that, but uh, it was uh, really important. And in fact, we knew we only had 18 days to shoot it, and we knew that we were going to privilege the setup of those shots over coverage. You know? Yeah, well, that was the actually my next follow up because what, one of the things that really stood out for me about the, the film again, I keep saying you're a first time filmmaker, but, but the confidence that you have um, to go with a, go with a very Difficult master shot and leave it and leave it at that. I think about think about the scene the scene toward the end when you have uh, uh, John Cho and Parker Posey sort of framed in a mirror and that that is that is the shot and, and to have the confidence to 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 
play out a really important scene in the film in that um, uh, in that way without having to cover it in a more traditional way. I mean, that took, took a certain amount of courage. There's no question there, but but I'm just saying. I mean, maybe the question is is like, was anyone telling you like, don't do this? This is uh, 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 yeah. this is well, this is unadvisable to, to do shoot a film before. Yeah, I mean, I think that there was like some nervousness, but again, you know, Chris uh, White, who was one of the first producers. And you know he's a, also a part of this real Hollywood world. He he wrote uh, wrote one Star Wars. You know he's like an unlikely partner in this. You know he like directed one of the Twilight movies. Um, he but you know what I didn't know again this was a real like humbling process because you know one can make judgment let's say in the art house world and John Cho was this guy who loves cinema and trying to make the you know this world from it. and and Chris White's you know his grandfather was Ingmar Bergman's um, uh, agent. And he grew up with Ingmar Bergman, uh, like like coming to his house, he called him like Grandpa Bergman, and and, <laughs> and I didn't know this, you know. And then he like is loves Ozu, and that's how we even made a connection. So he he was on board, and he kept on saying, just per, like let him do what I trust him, let him do what what he's gonna do, which is like you know like incredibly fortunate for my first film. I mean, it, and so. There was, I know, when, once a financer and producer, you know, there was a little bit, but there was a kind of, we all got along with this trust. Um, that particular shot, you know, um, yeah, I loved. And we, you know, we had planned to do, to cut into it after uh, we, you know, th that was the plan. But after we did that scene, you know, I remember Parker saying, uh, you know, and we, we had a conversation, we're like, I think we got it. We all agreed, we're like, we got it. And you know they were setting up. We we're setting up, and we we're like, Do we? No, we got it. You know, we felt real confident. And yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it, this we kind of just looked at each other and said, Why do we need to shoot it? We have it. So yeah, we, we just stuck with it. Right. I mean, I don't.